This video will show how to deploy the IBM Security Access Manager Virtual Appliance version 8. It will also show how to activate the web as well as the mobile component and how to perform a basic configuration. You should have downloaded the ISO image along with the two activation codes in the Quick Start Guide. In the Quick Start Guide, look at step 3. What you need to know before you start is the hostname, the management IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway and DNS server. In addition, what you need to know is the basic configuration for your virtual appliance, which is going to be 100 GB of disk space, 4 GB of memory and at least 3 network devices for a maximum of 6 can be configured. And you will need a virtual DVD CD-ROM drive, which will mount to the ISO image that you downloaded. In order to access the ISO image, the ISO image should be downloaded to one of your data stores. In our example, we've downloaded it to Data Store 2, and we have located it in a directory called ISO Images. The SAM 8.0 bsvaml.iso file is the ISO image we're going to need to attach to the CD-ROM drive. On your ESXi server, select File, New, Virtual Machine. Create a custom virtual machine. Select Next and enter a virtual machine name. Enter a virtual machine name that represents the usage of the system. Select a storage location. Select a virtual machine version. Select the guest operating system. Select the Linux version of other 2.6x Linux 64-bit. Select Next. Set the number of virtual sockets and number of cores per virtual socket. In this example, we leave both at 1. Select Next. Memory to a minimum of 4 gigabytes. And select Next. Select three network cards. Remember that the appliance requires a minimum of three network interfaces, but can support up to six. We are creating two management interfaces and one application interface in this example. Make sure you select appropriate networks for each network card. We're going to set one to VM network and the other two to VLAN 2. Select Next. Select Next for the LSI Logic Parallel. Select Create a new virtual disk. Select a disk size of a minimum of 100 gigabytes. And in our example, we're going to use Thin Provision. Next. Next. And then select Finish. The machine shows up in your server. Right click the machine. Select Edit Settings. And what we need to do now is mount the CD drive. We will use a data store ISO file and we'll browse to the ISO file that we have allocated before. So data store 2, ISO images, SAM. And then make sure to select to connect at power on. And one more thing we can do for cleanup, we can actually remove the floppy drive. Select OK. Select Power On. Select the Console tab and we will see how the ISO image starts up. It is started. Select the language. Enter Yes to proceed. And as a reminder, if the focus is within this console, in order to get your cursor back out, press Control Alt. This will restore your cursor to your regular desktop. Once you see the Unmount the Installation Media, right-click your server again, select Edit Settings, select your CD DVD drive, deselect Connected and Connected at Power On. And actually, if you wanted to, you could remove it later on as well. Select OK. You will get a warning, which you have to select yes and say OK. 
click on the image desktop and select enter or any other key and that will restart the appliance. Once the appliance is restarted, press any key to get the login. Login with admin and password admin. Press enter to continue. Four to proceed to acceptance. Select one for agree. We will not enable FIPS mode. Remember that once FIPS mode is enabled, the only way to undo it is by reinstalling the appliance. Select N for next. Select one to change the password. Remember the old password is admin. Select a new password. Select next. Select one to change the host name. The host name we're going to be using is lab sam mgr01 as this is our labs sam manager01 machine. Select end for next. The next step is to configure the management interface. We'll be configuring management interface number one, so select three. Select 2 for manual. Enter the IPv4 address, the subnet, and the default gateway. And in this case, we're going to do an automatic IPv6 configuration. Select N for the next screen. Set the DNS servers as needed. Select N for next. Use the menu to change the time zone as well as the time and date as needed. Once the time and date are set correctly, set end for next. Select one to accept the configuration. This completes the basic configuration. You can type help to see a list of available commands here, or you can type exit to log off this interface. Using a standard browser, we can now access the interface. Enter the management hostname that you created earlier. Since this is the first time and the connection is not trusted, we're going to add an exception. And we'll get to the appliance login screen. Enter admin and the password that you said earlier in the configuration. Select Manage System Settings, select Licensing and Activation, select Import, select one of the two license files, select Open, and this one is for the web. Select Save Configuration. Select Import. And this is the one for mobile. Select Save Configuration. Then click here to review changes or apply them to the system. And we will say Deploy. Once the change is applied, this change requires a restart of the interface, so click here to return to the local management interface. This completes this video on how to install the Security Access Manager all-in-one appliance, perform a base configuration, as well as activation of the mobile and web interfaces.